hardware, software, okay. engineered to work. Can together. we go to the big screen in the keynote or? Okay. Here's Larry. Here it is. Here's Larry. Thank you very much. I will never get tired of looking at that video. They actually, uh, I got an email this morning and uh, Judy Sim, our head of marketing, asked me if I, you know, uh, uh, what, which video I wanted to run. They found this other video that looked pretty exciting and they sent me a copy of it and I said, no, I think, I think we'll stick with the one we ran on Sunday. Uh, it, it, was a, it was a fantastic moment in my life. Uh, it was a, fa a fantastic moment in the life of the America's Cup, and I'm so enormously proud of the team uh, that brought home the Cup and, and some of the guys in the audience now, and I would like them to stand up and just take a bow or just look back. Thank you very much for an incredible job. Go USA! Introducing the America's Cup team. Okay, uh, this has been uh, this has been quite a week. If I could get the first slide, please. Uh, we've announced more new technology, more innovation this week any, uh, than any time before in Oracle's history. On Sunday night, I introduced a new combination of hardware and software that we call uh, the Exologic Elastic Cloud. And it's the second major product where we really have focused on integrating our software, which we've been doing for years, with the next generation of hardware technology. And we believe fundamentally that if you engineer the pieces, the hardware pieces, and the software pieces together, to work together, you get a much better overall system. By better, I mean it's more reliable, it's easier to install and use, it's faster, it's more secure. Uh, again, it's, it's a little bit like the iPhone. My, you know, everyone, I don't know if everyone knows it, but Steve Jobs is my best friend. I love him dearly. And... Uh, He's someone I, you know, I watch very closely what he, what he does over at Apple. And he's believed for a very, very long time that if you engineer the hardware and the software to work together, the overall user experience, the product is better than if you just do a part of the solution. And actually most industries work that way. You know, the car industry delivers complete cars. It includes the engine and the wheels and, the, uh, and actually a lot of software, uh, whether it's navigation software or software that just computes how much gasoline is to be injected into the cylinders at that particular moment or what the temperature should be on your catalytic converter. Uh, there's an awful lot of computer systems running a modern car, but it all comes together. It's all engineered and tested and, and to work together, whether it's a Prius or, you know, my favorite commuting car, the Bugatti. So the Exologic Elastic Cloud, after the first, the first machine that we introduced uh, that combined hardware and software was Exadata, our database machine. And we had the storage and, and the InfiniBand network and the database servers and the memory systems and Flash and all of those pieces combined with the Oracle database, uh, our Linux operating system, an awful lot of software, an awful lot of software and hardware where all the pieces were engineered, tuned, fitted together, and it delivered extreme performance and extreme reliability for our customers. And, and this week we've introduced kind of a new version of the Exadata machine, uh, the, a new top-of-the-line database machine rather, using rather, rather than two microprocessors per node, we have eight microprocessors, or eight sockets per node. Uh, and they, that's the Exadata X2-8. So it's, it's our new very top-of-the-line Exadata machine. Both the Exalogic machine and the Exadata machine, examples of what you can accomplish when you engineer hardware and software together. And integrate all the pieces together. So the integration, a lot of the systems integration is done by us, the supplier, rather than you, the customer. That should save you a lot of money. And you should get a better and more reliable result. 
We'll be spending most of the time this afternoon in this presentation talking about fusion applications. This is a project that began five years ago, uh, more than five years ago. Actually, we knew we had to do this in December of 2004 when we completed the PeopleSoft acquisition. We, got, we actually got PeopleSoft and we got J.D. Edwards as a part of that acquisition. We suddenly had three different ERP systems, two different HRMS systems. We knew we were going to have to do a next generation and take the best ideas from PeopleSoft and the best ideas from the Oracle eBusiness Suite and fuse them together in a next generation of technology. And that was the beginning of, of the Fusion application project. And today we're talking about the, you know, the, the, the moments before we finally deliver Fusion to customers this year and make it generally available to all of our customers uh, in the first quarter of next year. So that's very exciting. It's the largest project, by the way. It's the largest engineering project in Oracle's history. We announced a new database, a, a new operating system kernel for our Linux operating system. Uh, as you know, about four years ago, we went into the Linux business and we started by saying we're going to be 100% Red Hat compatible. We're not changing that, by the way. Uh, we still have the Red Hat compatible version of Oracle Linux, but we're introducing a new highly optimized, high performance version of our kernel highly reliable version of our kernel called the Unbreakable Enterprise Kernel. And we had to do that really because we needed an operating system for Exologic and Exadata that was a lot faster than what we could get if we st stuck to strict Red Hat compatibility. We needed an operating system that was much more secure, more, more reliable than we could have ever achieved if we had stuck to Red, just Red Hat compatibility. So again, from a Linux point of view, uh, you want Red Hat compatibility, we got it. Uh, you want something that's faster and more reliable and more secure, we got that too. Uh, we've introduced the next generation of Solaris, Solaris 11. Solaris has long been the most popular Unix in the world. It is the best enterprise class universe, Unix on the planet. Uh, we're very excited uh, to now offer two different operating systems, Linux, which we've offer, offered for four years, and now uh, with the Sun teams joining, uh, joining Oracle, we now have Solaris, the most popular, the highest quality, the most feature-rich, the most reliable, the fastest Unix on the planet Earth. Very excited about that. Uh, we're introducing, uh, we've given you a roadmap, and we're introducing a whole new generation of Spark microprocessors. And our goal is to offer you more performance, more throughput through more cores at a lower, you know, in terms of TPMC per watt. You're going to hear me talking about TPMC per watt. How many transactions we can do while consuming the least amount of energy. And our goal with Spark, and we have a lot of them, is to be not only the, deliver the most throughput of any microprocessor on the planet, but do it while consuming the least amount of energy per amount of work done. And we've laid out the roadmap for Spark going forward. So that this, that those of you who are heavily invested in Spark and Solaris, there's going to be a next generation and a generation after that and a generation after that, where the, the systems get more feature-rich, faster, and more en energy, energy uh, efficient. Java. Uh, we've given you a, a complete Java roadmap, and some of the a couple of things I'm most excited about are our, our new vector graphics, uh, graphics controlled, you know, controlled by software. And uh, we have 2D graphics coming out very soon, and a little, a little bit after that, 3D graphics. So much more capable, much more capable uh, graphics capability built right into Java. So as you look at the next generation of UIs, which we think will be a combination of HTML5 and Java, Java is really designed to be, you know, to coexist with HTML5 and deliver a high quality graphical user experience uh, from point of view of, of Java on devices. Obviously Java on servers are, is gonna get faster and more reliable. Uh, speaking of faster and more reliable, we introduced uh, MySQL 5.5, Candidate 5.5, I guess is the right way to describe it, where we get delivered huge performance improvements to MySQL. 
uh, huge reliability improvements to, to MySQL. All measurable stuff, by the way. All absolutely measurable stuff. I know a bunch of people were concerned when we took over MySQL if we were going to uh, kill it. And we, you know, and, and uh, no, we want to make it better and make money. So rather than killing it, uh, since we spent all that money to buy it, uh, we'd like to get a return on that investment. And the only way we can get a return on that investment is make MySQL better for you. Uh, make it more appropriate for running your, your applications. So if it's delivering more value, uh, then perhaps you know, we, can, we can benefit by making MySQL a more profitable business unit for us. So, and this is, just, this is a partial list of all the things we've announced uh, this past, past several days. Uh, this is dramatically more technology than Oracle has ever had. Uh, our investment, our annual investment in R&D is now going to, is going to exceed $4 billion per annum. And why stop there? So we're going to keep going, we're going to keep investing, we're going to keep innovating, and we're going to deliver, we think, we're going to try to deliver more value than any other technology company. And our, our strategy is really quite simple. Our strategy is to take a lot of separate pieces that our customers used to buy as components and take those pieces and, and do pre-integration, the software pieces and the hardware pieces. Let's get those pieces integrated together and deliver you complete working systems like Exadata and Exalogic. We think that will make your life simpler, our customers' life simpler, deliver you, again, something you, you plug in and works the first day, it's reliable, it's secure, it's fast, and it's cost effective. Next slide. Uh, so we have better technology uh, and more, more technology than ever before, and we have a more experienced management team uh, than ever before. We're very excited that Mark Hurd has joined us uh, from Hewlett Packard. Uh, Joanne Olson has joined us from IBM. And Chuck Rosewatt has come back. Uh, he, he took a, a year off and went to Harvard. And um, we're thrilled that you know, after, after that sabbatical and, and uh, he's decided to come back and run support for us. As everyone probably knows, Chuck ran all of engineering before Thomas Curry and took over engineering. And now he's, uh, again, after, 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 after one year, uh, you know, I guess Chuck, Chuck went to MIT and I guess he was, uh, in, in the, when, he was, when he was younger and uh, I guess he decided, you know, you know, gee, what was it like, you know, just... It, it, Harvard was in the neighborhood. I guess he you know, just missed out not going when he was younger, so he went this past time. I guess he only goes to school in Boston or Cambridge, whatever. Uh, but we're thrilled to have him back. He obviously knows Oracle very well. He's done a terrific job of, uh, of building technology over many, 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 many years. And during that time, I know he works, he's worked with a lot of customers uh, who had, had issues. And a lot of those issues eventually devolved and went into our development team. Chuck did a great job supporting those customers, and now he's doing that full time. Again, we're thrilled to have Mark and Joanne and, Ch and Chuck with, with us. That we've never had a more experienced, more talented management team than we have today, and that's a pretty good t combination. You know, a lot of great technology, a lot of great people. Uh, and we think that that's the recipe for, you know, that's a good recipe for us to deliver real value to our customers. Next slide. I'm, I'm going to be very brief, but I, I just want to repeat uh, a little bit of my presentation on Sunday, which is the Exologic cloud in a box. Uh, I have to, have to chuckle a little bit about the phrase cloud in a box, because I know that uh, the, the, the CEO of Salesforce.com said, you know, Larry just doesn't get it. Clouds don't run in a box. Okay. So what does he think Salesforce.com runs on, if not on a box? Doesn't run on a box. Actually, Salesforce.com runs on 1,500 Dell servers, which are boxes. One thousand five hundred of them. Now he really got upset because we don't have an Exologic box here on stage, but the Exologic box is quite about this tall, and he was really offended the box was taller than he was. <laughs> and he said, "Clouds especially don't run on boxes that are tall." <laughs> I mean, you, please look this up. I, no, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> I mean. Uh, 
Okay. Do you think those 1,500 Dell boxes are all really like low to the ground? Like, you need acres and acres. You, you put them, you stack them up because you use less floor space unless you have really low ceilings. I, I mean, it, I mean, it's... The thing that's interesting, let's look, look, look at the next slide uh, uh, about this. You know, what, what, what ex the Exologic machine is, uh, it's uh, 30 servers, uh, infinite band networking, a lot of storage, a, a virtual machine, operating system, uh, middleware, uh, that runs all of your applications, by the way, including Salesforce.com. This is actually kind of the ideal box. If you wanted to go, say, from 1,500 servers to 400 or whatever, I don't know what the right number is, but certainly a lot less than he's got, he would pick Axelogic. It, it's, an, it's kind of the ideal machine to run an application like Salesforce.com. But somehow, I go back to the phrase, Larry, you don't get it. A cloud does not run on a box. And this is the problem I've had with the term cloud computing. <laughs> I, I think, you know, we, we made a big point of defining what we, we mean by cloud computing. We mean, we, we mean what Amazon means by cloud computing. We mean it's a platform. That means hardware and software. That's right, a box and software. <laughs> That's what it means. I'm sorry. I don't, it's, a, it's a computer. It really is a computer. A cloud, by the way, folks, is a lot of computers on the network. I mean, it's, and that's, you know, it's, a lot, it's a lot of boxes and a lot of software. Now, we think the software has to have certain characteristics. We think it has to be virtualized. Uh, it has to be elastic. You know, we made, made a bunch of statements of what we think cloud is. But very much our view and Amazon's view are pretty much the same. Uh, so we kind of took what Amazon had, to put it, made had an Oracle flavor to it, and put the hardware in the software. So our customers can build private clouds out of this box or a company like Salesforce or NetSuite or Oracle Corporation can use these, these boxes for building public clouds. But I'm sure when Mark gets back and talks to his technical people, they'll let him know, in fact, that, that you do need boxes. <laughs> you really do. And, um, and, and, we, and what we're doing is we think the box should be efficient. It should be fast. It should be reliable. And if you combine the hard, if you engineer the hardware and the software to, to work together uh, in the box, you're going to get a much better experience. And, and I think the Salesforce customers and Salesforce.com would both benefit if they took a close look at, at Exologic and got Exologic and Exadata uh, to run their cloud. And, okay, I'll stop right there. Next slide. Uh, the Exelogic Cloud, it's 30 compute servers, 360 cores. Uh, uh, all these things are interconnected via InfiniBand. And uh, we have an integrated software appliance that stores the software and, applica and application files. Uh, the interesting thing about this, and I have a slide on it, is when you patch, when you patch the microcode, the virtual machine, the operating system, your applications, you, you, you download one file to that storage appliance and you patch everything together. So not only is this thing easier to install, it's much easier to patch, it's much, more, it's much safer to patch, it's much more reliable. Uh, again, I'm going to come back to this theme over and over again, you'll see, see banners. Hardware and software engineered to work together. We do the integration, we deliver the complete box, it saves you a lot of money. Uh, and delivers much better performance than you otherwise could get. Next slide. Um, the software we have in it is the WebLogic server, a very interesting piece of software for, for memory coherence. We've got, as I mentioned, we have 30 separate servers in that machine, and this coherence software synch kind of creates the illusion that those 30 separate servers is just one big memory system. It maintains memory coherence across the servers. Support uh, uh, J both JRocket and Hotspot JVMs, and Oracle VM, Linux, and Solaris. Uh, next slide. It is incomparable, and this is why I think it's kind of ideal for Salesforce.com or NetSuite or us or anyone who, you know, you run job. It, it is so much faster than using conventional machines. So if they want to go from 1,500 boxes to, to a few boxes, they really should look at this. 
Uh, it's elastic capacity on demand. This is really interesting. A modern cloud, if you build the cloud properly out of the right boxes, uh, when someone runs a report that, that really is consuming a lot of resource, you simply add more virtual machines uh, to handle that additional capacity. What Salesforce has to do is have people canceling those reports if you get a report that's consuming too much. because It's not a virtualized system. It's not a virtualized system. So we've got, it doesn't have elastic capacity on demand. When de demand goes up, their strategy is reduce demand, cancel reports. This thing has, an, uh, has elastic capacity on demand. It's fall tolerant and, sca and scalable. Uh, the, uh, another thing Salesforce has that, that they need to upgrade is they have this thing called multi-tenancy. Multi A lot of people say, oh, multi-tenancy, that's what makes it, that's what makes it uh, cloud, or that's what makes it software as a service, multi-tenancy. Multi-tenancy is a horrible idea. Multi-tenancy means you've, every customer has his data, all their data in the same database. One database, all the customers dump their data. GE, Siemens, you know, you name it. All, all your data, if you're using sales, all your data is commingled. Everyone's, everyone's customer lists are in one single database. That is a horrible security model. In the 21st century, the way we support lots of different customers is called virtualization, not multi-tenancy. Multi-tenancy is a decade-old, 15-year-old technology. Virtualization gives you the ability to support lots and lots of customers in a secure fashion. Your data is separated on your own virtual machine. There's, iso there's fault isolation. There's data protection. Multi-tenancy is, is old technology. If Salesforce upgraded to this, they could have a virtualized system, unlike what they have now. And it would be fault tolerant, unlike what they have now. It would be scalable and secure, unlike what they have now. They need to look at something that's not 15 years old. Next slide. And if you want to really, if you want to run fast, this is the way to do it. Exologic. Uh, in terms of HTTP requests, web requests, uh, 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 over a million, this one box, one, one 19 inch rack, has over a million requests per second. You know, you know, con you know conventional hardware, that's tenfold faster than conventional hardware. A ten times performance improvement when running Java. Uh, in terms of messaging, almost two million messages per second. That's nearly a five times improvement over conventional hardware and conventional software. So this machine it delivers enormous performance gains and cost savings because you need 20% as much hardware and software to do the same job. So it really is a huge cost savings, huge performance improvement, and of course, consumes less energy. Next slide. Uh, it runs all your applications. Uh, so uh, if you're not salesforce.com, you don't have a big application, but you're a conventional end user customer, you build this private cloud, and you can run everything on the Exologic private cloud. The eBusiness Suite, Siebel, PeopleSoft, your custom applications, it all runs on the Exadata you know, uh, Elastic Cloud. It really is the right platform uh, for delivering, delivering the benefits of hardware and software engineered to work together. And it's fully fault tolerant. It is fully fault tolerant. There is no single point of failure in either the Exadata or Exologic boxes. If a server fails, it keeps running. If a network connection fails, it keeps running. If a virtual machine fails, it keeps running. It's fault tolerant not only to hardware, hardware failures, but also software failures. And we do that. We, we, that's what we engineer into the box. I know I'm, I've said it a hundred times, I'll say it again. If you engineer the hardware and the software to, to work together, the virtual machine uh, to work with all the different servers, uh, you can engineer these systems that are at once high performance, low cost, and they just keep running if there are failures. They tolerate failures. They not just disk failures, but CPU failures, memory failures, networking failures, complete server failures, power supplies go out. This thing just keeps running. There are no single points of failure. 
It is an absolutely fault-tolerant system built into the box. Next slide. You can start with a very small quarter rack and build up to a full rack of X-Logic boxes. Next slide. And, and it scales up to eight racks. Next slide. Uh, all, all the Exadata and Exalogic boxes are identical. This is another important issue of hardware and software engineered to work together. Most of our customers have unique hardware software configurations. You make a decision on what networking, what, what networking cards you're going to have, what networking drivers you're going to run, what version of the operating system you're going to run, what VM you're going to run, virtual machine you're going to run, what version of the Oracle database you're going to run, what version of the Oracle middleware you're going to run. You make lots and lots what, what applications you're going to run. You make a lot of separate decisions. What, you know, what, what version of the, this Dell CPU or this HP CPU or this IBM CPU you're going to be running. And then you put all these things together. Well, no one's tested that configuration other than you. Our large customers all have unique hardware software configurations. They're all different. And we've never tested that exact configuration. That's a problem. Doesn't mean it's not going to work. It just means when we deliver those pieces and you assemble those pieces and you integrate all those hardware and software pieces, you have to do a very thorough job of testing those components that have never worked together in exactly that way. Contrast that with the idea of taking, letting us pick the VM and the version of the VM and us pick the OS and us pick the middleware and us, in, in, the, the microprocessors and the memory systems and the flash cards and the disk controllers and the disk drives. I mean, there's so many different pieces and the networking cards and the networking fabric and the, and the networking drivers and the disk drivers and the mi microcode, the, the database. I can go on and on, let, letting us pick a single configuration and test it for millions of hours and, making, and make sure it works before you get it. That's the idea of hardware and software engineered to work together. It's not just that, you know, it's that we can do all of this testing, all of this optimization, all this performance tuning before you get it. All this integration, the integration is done. We know the pieces work together and work together well. And then we deliver that same exact configuration to hundreds and thousands of our customers. We're your configuration is not unique anymore. Your configuration is, is identical to thousands of other configurations all over the world. Why is that good? It's not just that we can thoroughly test it. When a customer in Chile has a bug on that configuration, we know there are 30,000 other customers with that same configuration. They are, will experience that same bug unless we notify them and prevent that bug from being, being rediscovered. It's not just that we do thorough testing, it's just when another customer experiences a bug, you're likely to experience the identical bug because you have the identical configuration. We can then come up with a patch, thoroughly test the patch, and patch everybody's configuration safely to minimize bug rediscovery. And about 98% of our support, about 98% of our support calls are bug rediscovery, that are bug related, are bug rediscovery. We can cut way back on that by having hardware and software integrated to work together. Next slide. All the customers run the same configuration. We engineer the, when we engineer the patch, we don't just patch one thing, you know, that one thing. We re then we rerun all of our regression tests for that entire config for that configuration, the exact configuration that you have. So you can take that patch with confidence, rather than getting that patch and say, "Oh my God, I now have to start this thorough patch testing," which all of you do. You have to test this patch a hundred ways from Sunday in your unique configuration because you know we couldn't have tested that patch in your unique configuration because we don't have a copy of your configuration. You're the only one in the world that runs that configuration. 
So hardware and software engineered to work together has huge benefit for our customers. When you install the system, it's thoroughly tested. When you patch the system, all, all the, you patch everything together, firmware, VM, operating system, middleware applications, all those changes are tested and we know they work together. Millions of hours of testing. Rather than what you get now, which is on your configuration, no testing at all unless you do it yourself. Next slide. But if you want hardware and software engineered to work together, if you want security and performance and reliability, you have to be willing to spend less. Uh, the Exologic machine is a fraction of the cost of other, if you want to call it, big iron. I mean, Exologic is big iron without a big price. You say, well, gee, that's a million dollars. That's a lot of money. Well, uh, it replaces many millions of dollars of hardware and software. So it actually, it actually is a much lower cost solution, much lower cost solution than an, a, a configuration delivering similar performance. Uh, plus it's fault tolerant and the old IBM stuff is certainly, uh, IBM's big fast machines are not fault tolerant. They have lots of, they're older SMP machines, old architecture, have been around a very long time. Scale, you know, it, it's vertical scale up rather than horizontal scale out. It's not parallel, ours is parallel. Uh, we have no single points of failure. They're loaded with single points of failure. We're faster, more reliable, more secure. They're expensive, not fault tolerant. Next slide. We also announced, I'm going to go through it quickly, uh, you, know, Mark, you know, Mark Hurd and John Fowler announced the Exadata database machine, the new top of the line database machine. And same theme, next slide. Uh, it is hardware and software engineered to work together, it delivers the best data warehousing performance by far and the best OLTP form performance by far. First ever database machine that runs OLTP. All the other data, data, database machines are data warehousing appliances. This is a general purpose computing system that does all of your workload, OLTP and data warehousing, faster than on any other computer you can buy. Next slide. Uh, over at SoftBank, we replaced a 60 rack Teradata machine with three racks. I know Mark would be upset because there's three racks is even more than one, but less than 60. Uh, that would be Mark Benioff, by the way. Uh, so Teradata was running on 60 racks, uh, running 60 racks at SoftBank. We brought in three Exadata racks, and depending on the application, those three Exadata racks run, ran twice to eight times faster than the 60 Teradata racks. Kind of shocking, don't you think? Five percent, you know, we limited 95 percent of the racks and still ran, I don't know, on average five times faster. With five percent of the so uh, hardware, we ran five times faster. That's why Exadata and Exologic are pretty good at building, building clouds. Mark, Mark, Mark Benioff has to replace those 1,500, you know, boxes with a few exadatas. It'll go, it, it'll go well. Th this, is really a stunning, this is really a stunning example of what you can accomplish when you engineer hardware and software to work together. Next slide. Uh, the new exadata machine, rather, you know, it's the first exadata machine uh, where we've actually not used two socket servers, but instead for the first time used eight socket servers. Uh, I'm, without going into all of the technical detail, this really allows us to ta uh, tackle very high-end OLTP machines, OLTP loads, rather. Uh, a, a single box has 128 cores. Uh, you can then string eight of these boxes together uh, with InfiniBand. Uh, it's an enormously, it is by far, by far the most powerful OLTP database machine ever built. Loaded with, with DRAM, e each, uh, uh, each 19 inch rack has two terabytes of DRAM. Uh, it, uh, you know, most OLTP databases will fit in main memory. It's loaded with flash. It's really a fast machine. Next slide. 
Um, we got a lot of data compression built into the Oracle database. And uh, we, by, by compressing the data, we can put 50 terabytes of data, uh, of, uh, 50 terabytes of your, data, of your data warehouse into just flash memory. So we can store a 50 terabyte data warehouse in flash. And we have incredible query performance versus the other data warehousing appliance. You can see the difference between, between um, uh, Teradata, Netiza, and Netiza, which now belongs to IBM, I guess. Teradata, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, IBM, Netiza, and Exadata. And by the way, this comparison where we're, we, uh, our throughput is five times Netiza is not including, not including data compression. If you throw in data compression, uh, that five times uh, improvement goes to 25 times improvement over in Netiza. Next slide. In terms of data storage, in terms of data storage, you can see a single rack of Exadata is equivalent to four, Neti uh, you know, four Netiza boxes. And even more EMC boxes or Teradata boxes. Next slide. Uh, and it's much faster than any disk array. It's much faster than EMC's disk array. Uh, you know, is it you know, five, ten times faster? The, 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 issue, the, the thing about uh, the, our, our storage system on Exadata is we have a lot of parallel InfiniBand connections coming out of our disk array and going into our database servers. So we parallelize InfiniBand, moving, moving the data from our disk arrays into the storage server. So, so you know, we move data 10 times faster, 20 times faster, 30 times faster than you can can't move data off an EMC disk array. It just, it will never be competitive because we engineered the storage servers in Exadata to work with the database servers in Exadata, and that's why we use this parallel InfiniBand fabric. This is all, plus we moved a lot of database software out of the database and into the storage servers which you don't get with EMC. They can never build anything like that because we engineered, re-engineered the database, took it apart, moved some of it into the storage servers, built a parallel interconnect between the storage servers and the database servers using InfiniBand, and the bandwidth we get really is conservatively 50 times faster than what you get when you talk to an EMC disk array or a NetApps disk array or anything like that. I mean, it really is, a, it's a stunning difference. And I'll come back to this theme. It's what you can get, achieve if you engineer hardware and software to work together. Next slide. Um, we encrypt everything now uh, with Exadata. Uh, uh, the encryption is all done in hardware. Uh, again, hardware software working together is the theme. So uh, there is no risk of you, you, you back up your database, that, that whole thing's encrypted. The, if those tapes disappear, good luck in figuring out what's on them. No one's going to be able to figure out what's on them. Uh, because we have encryption built into the hardware. There's no overhead anymore. There's no overhead, no performance penalty at all to encrypt all the data in your database. Why wouldn't you do it? And then when you back it up and, and someone misplaces one of those tapes and we read about that periodically in the newspaper, who cares? Good luck figuring out what's on those tapes. You're not going to lose credit card numbers or social security card numbers or health records and someone's not going to be able to see that stuff because your database is completely encrypted. Always. Everything. Built into the hardware. IBM Netiza? Can't do that. Next slide. Uh, and it's dramatically lower cost uh, than other iron, whether it's IBM's Netiza iron or IBM's power servers. Uh, it, this costs a tiny fraction, a tiny fraction of what it costs to do the same job using IBM iron and conventional storage. So you save a lot of money. Uh, uh, you have a system that's more reliable. Uh, if, if, you, if you use combinations of hardware and software that were carefully designed and engineered to work together. Next slide. We have a complete family of Exadatas. We've been in the Exadata business now for a couple years. 
uh, and it starts with a quarter rack of, uh, of the two socket, uh, of the two socket uh, database nodes and goes all the way up to eight racks of our new uh, X2 mod, you know, Model 8 uh, with, with the eight socket nodes. So from a fairly low cost, small Exadata server, you can grow that up to the, by far the biggest OLTP machine that has ever been built. Next slide. The, you know, we, we entered the, next slide. We entered the Linux business about four years ago and uh, we now have 5,000 customers. It's gone very, very well. Uh, and our pledge to our Linux customers were, is that we will be 100% Red Hat compatible. We promise. We promise. So you can gracefully switch from Red Hat to Oracle Linux, and all of your applications will run unchanged. In fact, no, almost not, virtually nothing will change except we'll do a better job of fixing bugs. That's it. We'll do a better job of fixing bugs. We'll do a better job of supporting you. But all of your applications will run unchanged. And we'll provide you with very, very high quality support at a very low cost if you pick Oracle Linux. And we convinced 5,000 people to go that route. Um, and there has never, and this is really interesting, there has never once been a compatibility bug reported to Oracle that says, hey, you, you said that Oracle was... was compatible with Red Hat, but here's an example where it's not. That has never happened in four years of us supplying Red Hat compatible Linux to our 5,000 customers. Next slide. But there are issues uh, with, Red Hat compa with, with, with being compatible with Red Hat. Red Hat happens to run a four-year-old kernel. And I don't want to go into all the details, but I mean, they're, you know, they're, I mean, Red Hat is really not designed for running something like Exadata or Exalogic or, or high-end fault-tolerant uh, computing, high-end secure fault-tolerant computing with, with uh, hardware-accelerated encryption, for example. It's just not designed to do things like that. So what we decided to do is not give up on Red Hat compatibility. We're going to keep doing that, but we're also going to do a second kernel. So we have one version of Linux with two kernels. You decide which one you're going to use uh, when, you, when you boot up the system. You can use the Red Hat compatible system, Red Hat compatible kernel, and get absolute Red Hat compatibility with Oracle fixing bugs and Oracle, fixing, and Oracle support. Or you can get the new kernel that's optimized for Oracle that delivers much more performance, much more reliability, and much better security. And we, have, we, now have these, uh, we now have these two kernels. And next slide. And the new unbreakable enterprise kernel is way faster, way faster than Red Hat. I mean, there's obviously a theme to what I'm talking about, which is performance, performance, performance. The faster we go, the less hardware you need, the less energy you consume, the less you spend, the less floor space you use up. So it's not just trying to run your applications faster. We like that too, but we'd also, you know, like to make sure that you don't have to buy, you know, if you can buy 500 servers, that's better than having to buy 2,000. So, over five times improvement in f reading out of flash memory, that's very important for Exadata and Exalogic. And it's going to be very important for other applications too, is all applications are going in the direction of exploiting flash technology. Uh, much better for solid, you know, SSDs, solid state disks, uh, you know, two and a half times faster. Uh, InfiniBand messaging, you know, three times faster, and just OLTP performance almost twice as fast on a large server like the eight socket machine that's used uh, in the Exadata X2-8. So, whichever you choose, the strictly uh, Red Hat compatible kernel or the Oracle Enterprise kernel, uh, we give you a choice of strict compatibility or high performance reliability and security. We highly recommend you use the unbreakable enterprise kernel for your Oracle database, your Oracle middleware, and your Oracle applications. Next slide. Okay. This is, uh, we've been working on building Fusion applications 
for a very, very long time, more than five years. Next slide. We have a lot of experience building ERP, CRM, and HRMS applications. And we had a number of goals when we started the, the project uh, to, to build the next generation of ERP, CRM, and human resources applications. One thing we wanted to do, by the way, which had never been done before, one thing we wanted to do was to use industry standard middleware to build these applications. You know, the e-business suite, the Oracle applications, used to run on its own middleware, which is ironic because Oracle had a team of people building middleware that we sold to our customers. And we had a completely separate team of people at Oracle building middleware to support the e-business suite. We had two separate middleware teams, complete duplication of effort, building very different products. One aimed at our applications, one aimed at our customers building custom applications at their shop, at your place. By the way, PeopleSoft was the same. We bought PeopleSoft and they had a huge middleware team building people tools. They didn't use industry standard middleware or tools to build their applications. Siebel had something called Siebel Tools. SAP has ABAP. Nobody, nobody until now has ever been successful in building large-scale ERP applications on top of industry standard middleware. And we were determined, we were determined to do whatever was necessary to make sure that we were going to deliver our applications, our next generation of applications that ran on industry standard Java middleware technology. Absolutely committed to that as a design principle. The next thing, the next goal we had Hey, we're back. We're going to cover the, the keynote. We're being kicked out of the floor here, Dave, but Larry Ellison's closing out his keynote. All the good stuff's out of the way, but Larry Ellison just on fire, throwing wow. everybody under the bus. EMC, NetApp, Dell, Dell IBM, Matiza, Salesforce, Services, Red Hat. Oh, I mean. He talked about Salesforce, Mark Benioff. Mark oh, Benioff, Matt Benioff, he trashed him hard. Basically came out today and said the cloud doesn't run in a box. And Larry said, well, of course the cloud runs on a box. And if you ran your cloud on our box, you'd have a lot less boxes. And those are Dell boxes, big partner. Michael Dell was here this week. Guess what? Dell, thrown under the bus. He trashed Mark Benioff. Benioff is getting bad advice. I don't know who he's talking to, but he's taking Larry L. Hulson head on. He's got a ton of cash. But he just killed everybody, and he's just coming out. Larry's way is the highway, and and we start. We saw the keynote. Let's just break it down. America's Cup performance, spraying champagne on everybody. That's what he does, you know. And then and then ultimately he laid it down. The Apple reference. His friend Steve Jobs. He said he called him my friend Steve Jobs. He built hardware with software. This is what they're doing. It's an Apple generation. Larry Ellison officially has Apple envy. Yeah, he's always admired Jobs. The I, we've talked about it. The iPhone of the data center is what Exadata is, and the Exalogic God Box. It's all integrated hardware, software, database, everything. Look at server okay. storage, flash. To me, the big story here is Larry Ellison has Apple envy. Okay, he wants to be the Apple of the enterprise, and the difference is Apple's a great product. Okay, people love Apple. Do people love Oracle? People love Exadata. Is it a great product? I tell you, people love Exadata. It's a small part of the portfolio now. But I don't know about Exologic. You know, we'll see. Some of the yeah. other highlights. Um, he talked about Exologic. He was very proud of Exadata and then Exologic. He talked about f uh, uh, Fusion five years ago, basically, when the acquisition. It's six of by my count, but. Yeah. PeopleSoft and JD Edwards, um, the new future, fusing it all together. They've rewritten their middleware platform on Java, which is a big reason why they bought the Sun. The largest yeah. engineering project in the history of Oracle. Available first quarter next year. It's clear who Hype runs dream? engineering at Oracle. Hype dream or reality? Well, I think you're going to see it 
eventually, but I don't think you're going to see it. There's no way you're going to see it this year. I doubt next year. I think reality, 2012. He hands that. He's going to go sailing. Go, Mark Hurd, I'll be back first quarter. Well, I think, I think it basically he'll keep people locked in. You can't, you can't just convert Oracle or apps in that time. You know, Other Oracle highlights, uh, OS change around uh, Exologic, Solaris Spark upgrades, Java 3D capability, MySQL, they're addressing it. New Linux kernel. Right. Yeah. He, he actually, Larry said, I know a lot of you were, were concerned that we were going to get rid of MySQL, that we're going to kill MySQL. He said, no, we want to make a profit out of MySQL. Larry, want to make a profit. There's a shock. Big technology push from Larry around the 4B, $4 billion in, in R&D. The strategy he played out was, we've been selling components for years. We know what's the best sellers. We're going to integrate them all together. That was key. And that's what he said, that we're going to bundle that. That is the strategy, total bundling, throwing everyone under the bus. Who's next? Well, that, that was the big, that was the big message at this show, and has been integrated hardware and software runs better, faster performance, we have more one, reliable. We have one minute. We're going to wrap up here. Basically, Java on demand, Java middleware, multi-tenancy. He said was a joke, bad model. It's about virtualization. No, he was talking specifically about Salesforce. The there. The key here is Apple Envy, and that he is taking a hardware software integration approach. Yeah, and the other the other thing that's clear in this in this event, Oracle Open World, whole different vibe in terms of the ecosystem. Larry's basically saying, look, you want to part with partner with me? That's great. I'd love to have access to your customers, but I am going to compete with you. And you know, just the trashing of Mark Benioff just was was amazing. He just like Mark Benioff and him are very competitive. Mark used to work at Oracle, Salesforce very aggressive. He took him on head on, just threw him under the bus. And, and he threw EMC under the bus. EMC is is the one of the largest Oracle customers on the planet. Larry doesn't care. He said, We're going after you, we're going after VMAX, we're we're better. Remains to be seen. So you know, a lot of holes in, in, in Oracle just, storage just, strategies. Just, just the whole ecosystem is changing. We talked about this early on day one. This new strategy is all about changing of the ecosystem, a new configuration amongst the players. This could be a very Cisco-like move, which we've been you know, blogging about Cisco trying to take on the world. Larry has got his eyes set on one thing, world dominance, Apple envy. Well, you know, my take on this is the ecosystem is certainly rooting for and supporting VMware, a very collaborative Oracle. It's like the mafia. Oracle, Larry Ellison, crushing it in his keynote. He is so much fun to watch. I love the, great. Love the America awesome. Cup. I mean, <laughs> he keeps us guys in business. We're going to have food food for uh, fodder for him for months. He always says a lot, doesn't he? Live on SiliconANGLE. Thanks to QLogic, live on SiliconANGLE.TV. We are at Oracle Open World. Everyone's breaking down. Dave, we're, gonna, we're closing it out. But we would not be able to bring you three days of continuous coverage if it was not for QLogic, who donated half their booth for us. Thanks to Justin TV. SiliconAngle.com, Justin TV for putting us up in a reliable connection. We got some bugs, we'll fix them out. We'll talk to those guys. Dave, thanks to you for coming in from Boston. Thanks for having the Wikibon community on here, John. We're we're appreciate it. to have you. you guys are smart people over there. David Foyer is up here as well. And uh, thanks to Mark Risen Hopkins, Michael Sean Wright directing behind the scenes. Chris and Nicole and Bert Lattimore, you know, uh, just filing stories all week. It's great stuff. The Cube will be there. We're looking at Hadoop World. I want to thank everyone out there who's watching for uh, supporting us. We really appreciate it. Have a good night. You Close, never know where the Cube is going to show up. Closing down from Oracle <laughs> Open World, the Cube might show up in your area. And if you can get inside the Cube, bring your knowledge, and we will extract it and broadcast it to the world. Come see us.